Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to be talking about how to make this water material that you can see on screen, as well as the post-processing volumes that go into making water believable. If you find this to be helpful at all, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. With that said, we're going to hop right into it. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is open up a brand new material. I've called this one an easy water. This should be on the easier side of water materials. Obviously, they can get much more complex than this. Uh, but we'll do our best to make this as simple as possible. If you've watched a previous material video, I've talked about how to get vectors on a subsurface of a material. Uh, and we're going to use that technique today. I'll put a link in the description of the original video that I found, as well as my take on it. The first thing I want to do is make one change to our basic material here, and that is the blend mode. I want to take it from opaque to translucent. And what that's going to do is give us different things that we can do with our do with our water. I also want to come down here to our translucency and I want to change this to a surface translucency volume. This is going to further change what we can see and use, but it's going to allow us to get that feel of water just a little bit better. Next, we're going to work on our base color. So if you remember from the ice video, there's a long complicated video about math on how to get vectors to show up underneath subsurfaces of a surface. And we want a similar effect to happen with water. So we're going to start out with a texture sample. I will do my best to describe everything, but since this is a little bit more involved of a shader, I might have to go pretty quickly. So I'm going to start out with a texture sample. I'm just going to copy one of these and paste one of them because I'll need one in a little bit. I'm also going to input a camera vector based on the world position. And I'm going to take this off and we're going to find a transform vector here. From our original texture sample up here, which we haven't made yet, we're going to get a custom reflection vector. And we're going to take our transform vector and pull it up right into there. In this first texture sample here, we really want to put a normal of water. So you can use the default normals of water that are in there, but if you have your own, I would recommend it. I don't really like the base ones that Unreal has. But for the sake of the video, we'll do it all as starter content. All right, next, we're going to come out of this custom camera reflection. Pull this a little bit further to the left here. We're going to come out of this custom camera reflection, and we're going to create a, two different masks. Click out and drag a mask that's going to mask our RG values, our red and green values. And we're also going to take a mask that's going to grab our blue values. So these are component masks as part of math. If you come down here, we can take off the red and the green and just enable the blue. So now we have two masks, one for red, one for green. We're going to take the absolute value of that. And we'll use that in a second. Now we're going to come down here to the second texture sample, which we haven't done. We're going to set this up as the water texture that we're going to be using. So I have my own water texture. You can use the starter content. They also have one. It is called T underscore water M. So what I want to do is I want to multiply this. Uh, and then I want to add a value. So first things first, I want to switch this multiply. You can do something like 2, or you can do something like 50. This is just going to change the depth of that variation. So I'm going to take this multiply here, and I'm probably going to set this at 12 for right now. Then I'm going to add a base value. So what we're doing is actually offsetting the distance behind the surface where this second sample is going to show up. So the add here is going to add some base value to that. 15 pixels behind, we're going to go, we're going to take our texture sample, multiply the value of the pixel, then add 15 to that, and we're going to show up that many pixels behind the base surface of the texture. And we're going to take this up here, up in front of our ABS, and we're going to take this into a divide. So on our blue values, we're going to grab the absolute value of those blue values, we're going to take that into that divide. Here we're going to take that and multiply that into our red green values. So we're going to multiply our divide here into our multi our mask is multiplied into our divide. And here we have the separation of our red, green, and blue values of our normal. 
Then we're going to come down here, we're going to create two constants really quick. One that's 1 and one that's 512. This is for bit values. And we're just going to create a divide here just so we have a large enough fraction. Then we're going to multiply that by 1 over 512. And we're going to add a texture coordinate to that multiplication. So add this multiplication into a texture coordinate. And we have almost all of our base color done. We click and drag this add off finally into the UV of our base texture. So we grab our texture sample, and then of course we're going to click and drag this into our base color. So here we put our base texture that we're going to use. So again, whatever water texture you want to use, this is where you're going to use it. And I see we have an air here. Uh, that is because I forgot to do, it's just the red values here. Um, we only want to take part of this RGB value, otherwise we're multiplying three values, and then we're multiplying and doing arithmetic on three values instead of one. So what this does is this makes this really wonky water. And this, <laughs> this honestly looks very, very strange. We can see water, but we can sort of see water underneath it. Um, sort of similar is how you'd look into a pool and be able to see stuff behind it. Uh, but obviously we're not done with the material, this is just the very surface of the material. But I find that it's a neat effect to be able to use on water. So now that we've done all this, I'm just going to pull this up here, hit C, and we're just going to give this a comment that this is just our base color. So now going down our list, we're going to have a few constants really quick. So I'm just going to grab a constant and then copy paste that a couple times. I'll go over these as I can. All right, so we want to grab a constant for our metallic, specular, and roughness. For metallic, I generally prefer water to be slightly metallic. This is sort of a preference here, but I go with generally something around 0.3, can be 0.25. Somewhere in the one third ish range is pretty good for metallic. As far as specular goes, since we have some metallic and some not metallic, we need some non metallic light to create um, specular light. So we want to put this on like a little bit higher than half, something in that range. That's generally what I like. And then, of course, as it's water, we want it to be entirely smooth and not rough at all. So let's leave that roughness at zero. For our missive color, we're going to pull this out and we're going to do a little trick here called a constant vector 3. So this is the color that our water is going to give off. Obviously, um, we want this to be close to the color of the actual water material here once it loads in. So we need to pick something on our color wheel that's sort of similar to this. So maybe like a light blue, something like that. And that's just going to have it give off a little faint amount of light, sort of like it's reflecting light. This should really boost up that specular and the different amounts of light that it's bouncing off. Just really gives it like just that little small bit of oomph that makes it a little bit closer to water. As far as opacity goes, I generally find that a constant somewhere in the range of 0.5, let's say like, you know, 0.45 is pretty good for this one. And we're done with a lot of the easier bits to this. Now we need to do some normal mapping and some refraction, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. So as you can see, our material is coming into shape, but it's not quite right. So one of the things that we need for our material is to have a normal. And that normal, what we want it to do is actually sort of wiggle and, and create waves. And the way we can do that is with a panner. A panner is a coordinate node that we can adjust the speed and change the normal based on that speed. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to take a panner and we're going to take a constant that goes into this panner. So this is our amount of, this is our speed of movement in our normal. So let's say something like, you know, 0.05, something that range. We're going to drag that into speed. Then we're going to create our actual normal from here. So this is going to come into a texture sample. And when we pull it in into a texture sample, it naturally connects to the UV. And here we want our water UV. So we grab the same normal that we grabbed up here. So T underscore water in. This is the normal of water that is provided in the base asset packed pack. And from here, we actually need to get this to move between two different normals to create that animation of, of waves. So we need to lerp. And once we do lerp, we're going to drag it into normal. But we need to grab this, copy it, paste it, drag this into B. And then once that goes, we have one thing left to do. And that is to grab a Fresnel. our refraction and we're just going to grab an exponent in which is just a solid constant and you know give that something along the lines of like 1.4 or thereabouts i'll realize that our emissive color is not properly setting i'm not sure why that's not setting Not, I don't know why it made me do it like that. Sometimes Unreal Engine is just a little bit wonky. But after that emissive color sort of fixes itself. So once that lets me change this emissive color, we can see that our shader is nearing completion. So let's go ahead and give that a save. It's worth noting that if you want this to be a little bit darker, just come down here and pull down just the alpha value a little bit. The darker you make this emissive color, the less light it'll give off, obviously. So the darker the inherent shader will be. If you feel like it, you can throw a Fresnel on there. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this shade of water. Sort of fits into the cartoony vibe aesthetic that I've been going for with uh, some other materials I've been working on. So let's pull that over here and we'll come back to our scene. Let's get rid of this base material here. We'll just go all the way back up and put the cube material on for now. So I've removed the colliders from this box and I've set a post-processing volume on this box. So right now it does nothing. If I run into this cube nothing will happen i'll just walk through and i'll see the inverse of the normals and i won't be able to see the cube but no post post processing will happen so i'm going to go ahead and attach our material that we just made to this you'll see that movement that our normals are creating with those panner nodes so that's good we want to see that movement but as we go into it nothing happens if we want to change our post-processing volume in it. So if you want to find a post-processing volume, first of all, I'll just say you come up here, you type post. You'll find a post-processing volume. Just click and drag it in. And then in your details, if you select one, you can just copy the location of your cube. So this cube, you can just copy this location and put it on your post-processing volume. I've already set that up ahead of the video. I've done nothing to this post-processing volume except open up some things that I know we're going to need. So in order to make water look right, being underwater, in order to make that function work, we need to change our chromatic aberration, we need to change our depth of field, 
and we need to change our white balance. So our chromatic aberration is probably the easiest. When we're inside our volume, we want to increase the intensity of chromatic aberration. So what that is, is you just see like almost double vision. It's like if you look at a 3D movie with the glasses off, you sort of see these lines around it. That's what a chromatic aberration is going to do when we increase that intensity. So something around 4 is a really good effect to start with this. Then we're going to come down here to white balance and we're going to edit our temperature. If we pull this down, we'll notice that the world gets bluer and bluer and bluer. So if we go to somewhere near 2000, something in that range, as soon as we enter our post-processing volume, we'll be in blue and we'll see sort of fuzzy outlines. And again, if you open your eyes underwater without goggles on or something like that, the only effect that we're really missing here is that it's just kind of a little bit blurry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look off in the distance and we're gonna change our focal distance. So the closer this is to zero, the more blurry it is. The further out it is, that's that's our focus range. So we'll have near infinite focus. If you've ever used a camera, you'll know that like up to like three feet, there's a lot of focal variations. And then longer than that, it doesn't really matter. So what we really want to have is something close to one here. So if we put like four in, that's probably a little bit too blurry. Maybe 12 makes it somewhat more acceptable. It looks like we're underwater. We still get that little sort of hazy effect from the chromatic aberration. Um, but it still looks pretty good. Those are the only three things that we need to change in our post-processing volume to make it work when we go into the water. So let's imagine that we can walk into our little water sphere here. Um, we want it to look like we walk into a water sphere. Obviously, we don't have normals on the inside, so we're not going to see the sphere when we go through it. But as we walk into it and our camera gets into it, it looks like we're underwater. And then when we walk out of it, we come out of our post-processing volume and the water effect goes away. This works really, really well when you come to like a large area of water. So here's a large area of water. You can see that movement of the normal. When you come under it, lo and behold, this looks sort of like you're diving into water. This is really a cool thing that you can do with it. It doesn't take much work. In the Unreal Engine, it's, it's a water normal on a plane. This is a water material on a plane and just a volumetric post processing and just a post processing volume underneath it. I really like this look when you run over to it with a character. I think it's really cool to sort of run down a slope and into the water. Obviously, if you're doing swimming in a game, you need to deal with gravity and animations and all that jazz. But from a perspective of just sort of like fiddling around with the materials, this is one of my absolute favorites. So we can run up to this water. And as soon as we get our camera under the water, we get this volumetric effect. In any case, I hope this has been helpful, sort of creating a pretty easy water material. If it has, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. All those things really do help us. If you're interested in helping us out, we have a Patreon linked in the description below. You can also find our Twitch channel, our 3D asset packs on the Unity store, and our phone app that has been released on the Android store there as well. Anything you can do with any of those things will help us out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always more than happy to help. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, it really does help, and hopefully we'll see you next week.